wavelength, which is written like this, that's the Greek letter lambda, is defined as the distance it takes a wave to complete one complete up and down motion or vibration, otherwise known as one complete wave cycle. It can be measured in various places along the wave, such as crest to crest as shown below. Right, here's one crest, here's another crest. This distance here is the wavelength. Likewise, we could have gone from here to here. That's also a wavelength. Like amplitude, wavelength is measured in meters. Label the following wavelengths by dragging the arrow line. If you're using this on Smart Notebook, you can do that, right? And if not, well, just watch what I'm doing. So crest to crest would be like that. Or it could also be like that. Trough to trough. Let's see if I can pick that up. There we go. And that's the only place where you have trough to trough. Starting point to ending point along the equilibrium position. So you know you have to be on that dashed line. So you start here. And that one's, let's show the difference there. That's a little bit tricky. You might have just wanted to start here. I mean, excuse me, start here and finish here because you come back to equilibrium. But the other clue is you have to be going in the right direction. So in the beginning, you're going up. When you cross at this point, you're going down. That's not a wavelength. You have to cross the equilibrium position and be going up again. So that's why that distance there is the wavelength. And here's the answers. I think I showed this one, I showed this one, and then the last one, that's not how I drew it, right? I started from here and went to here. But it's the same thing. You can pick any point on the equilibrium position and then find the next point where the wave is going in the same direction. In this case, it's going down. When it crosses, it's going up, so that's no good. But over here, it's at equilibrium again and it's going down. So that's your wavelength. The period of a wave is defined as the time it takes for one full vibration or one full wavelength to occur. So let's see, what's the symbol for this? T, capital T, probably because time is little t. Look at this graph very carefully and see if you can find out what's different from the wave graphs we've been using so far. The previous graphs plotted the vertical position of the wave versus its horizontal position. This graph plots the vertical position of the wave, okay, same thing, versus the time where it occurs, and is called a position time graph. The period of this wave is six seconds, because that's how long it takes for the wave to travel from its equilibrium position to its crest, its trough, and back to the equilibrium position. Be careful not to confuse this position time graph with the vertical position, horizontal position graph that we used earlier. The red arrow here represents the period. On the vertical position, horizontal position graph, that arrow would represent the wavelength. The frequency of a wave, and that's labeled F, other texts will label it with the Greek letter nu, the frequency of a wave is defined as the number of vibrations a wave makes per second. The unit is vibrations per second, or cycles per second, or one over second, and it's actually called Hertz, capital H, little z. We will again use a position time graph to illustrate frequency. This wavelength makes one vibration or oscillation in six seconds. So here, goes up down, then comes back to the starting point, that's six seconds. How many vibrations did it make there? We count that as one vibration. Okay, it starts here, and when it comes back to the point where it's going in the same direction, and it's at the same equilibrium point, that's our wavelength, that is one vibration. The frequency then is one vibration over six seconds, which is awkward to say, so you just say it's 0 0.167 hertz. Can you see a relationship between period and frequency? Before we answer that question, consider the two graphs shown. We've looked at the top graph already. 
that one has a period of six seconds. What is the period of the bottom graph and what happens to its frequency? The wave represented by the bottom graph has a period of three seconds. Up, all the way down, and then back up to the equilibrium position, and that is three seconds. That is half the period of the wave on top. The bottom graph has more vibrations in the same time than the top graph. So its frequency is going to be greater. All right, if we look at six seconds here, bring it down to this point here, we can see we have two complete vibrations. We can conclude that as the period of a wave's vibrations decreases, its frequency increases. And of course the opposite would be true, right? In the one case you go this way, and in the other case you go this way. Either case, you get period is inversely related to frequency. Of course, we have mathematical ways of showing it. The inverse relationship is shown by frequency is one over the period, or period is one over frequency. So let's solve a quick problem here. What is the frequency of a wave with a period of three seconds? So here we repeat the formulas we're going to need, and you want to find the frequency of a wave with a period of three seconds. So that means we'll use this equation here. Frequency is one over t, one over three seconds, so that's 0.33 cycles per second, or 0.33 hertz. What if you're told that a wave makes more than one oscillation in a measured time period? For example, this wave makes three complete oscillations in nine seconds. Here's our nine second mark. So we go one, two, three oscillations. What is the period and the frequency of the wave? Find the period by dividing the total time it takes, t, by the number of oscillations it makes in that time period. So you can see now, hopefully, the relationship between capital T for period, which the units are seconds, and little t for how much time you've been oscillating, which is also seconds. Then find the frequency by dividing the number of oscillations by the total time. So let's do the period first. Our total time is 9 seconds. It makes 3 oscillations. So the period is 3 seconds. Then find the frequency. The number of oscillations it makes is 3. It takes 9 seconds to make it. So the frequency is 0.33 hertz. Now earlier we said that period is 1 over the frequency. Does that work here? Well, let's see. Frequency is 0.33. So what's 1 over 0.33 hertz? Well, that's going to be 3 seconds, so it does work. That's kind of good. 